Um, now we could say that a Let's think in general about situations with constant temperature. We need a name for situations with constant temperature. Well, a good name for a situation with constant temperature is isothermal. We just saw that cyclic processes have constant temperature, but that's a little bit unusual. There's many other cases with constant temperature that are not cyclic. So anytime therm means like temperature, like a thermometer measures temperature, just like a barometer measures pressure, a thermometer measures temperature. So isothermal means constant temperature. What would be the effect then of that on this equation? If we have constant temperature, wh which of the variables does that tell us about? What does it tell us about LTU? Say again? Right. And then what happens to the equation? Now, actually, it looks like we got the same equations as we did for cyclic, because for cyclic, delta U was zero. I guess we could say that cyclic processes are just a special case of isothermal processes. So if this box represents all the isothermal processes, cyclic processes would be a special case. Any isothermal process, delta U is zero, while cyclic processes are just a special case where delta U is zero. So pretty much, we're going to have the similar equations here that we had for cyclic. We're still going to have delta U zero and a constant temperature. Now, remember, how would they signal in words if you have constant volume? In words, they would signal constant volume by saying a fixed piston. How would they signal constant temperature? Uh, how would they signal constant temperature? Uh, they would probably say that we, um, so how do you keep something at constant temperature? Well, suppose that we put the piston, say we put this piston with the gas, and let's say that we put it in a huge bath of liquid. huge bath of liquid. The point of being huge is that since this is huge, this temperature is not going to change very much. And let's say that the gas is in thermal equilibrium with the liquid. Well, then if the liquid's temperature is not changing and the gas is in equilibrium with that, then the gas's temperature can't change. So one way you can keep the, the gas's temperature from changes, changing is by putting it in a big bath of liquid that can't change temperature very much. Or in general, they could just say they're doing something to keep the temperature constant. So you have to watch out for wording that says that they're going to keep the temperature constant. They might just say isothermal. Okay. But if they said that it was in thermal equilibrium with a large quantity of liquid, that would be a signal that probably the temperature is not going to change very much, because it's hard to change the quantity, the temperature of that large quantity of liquid. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Uh, Let's say we have an isothermal compression and the magnitude of the work is 8 joules. Let's find Q.
Sounds good. So we want to use this equation, or actually, I guess we'd use this equation. Q equals negative work on negative eight joules. How would you interpret that negative eight? What does that tell us about what's happening? Um, eight joules of heat being removed. Okay, eight joules of heat is being removed. So does that mean the temperature is going up or going down? Ah, that's right. We avoided the trap. That's right. We know that there's no change because it's isothermal. Heat is not the same thing as temperature. We're removing 8 joules of heat, but we're also adding 8 joules of energy from the work. So those two things are going to cancel, and there's not going to be any change on the temperature. So no change in the temperature, but we're removing 8 joules of heat. By the way, what would this look like in the graph? Well, should the graph be going um, to the left or to the right? We should now memorize that this is what the curve looks like for isothermal processes. So previously we, we saw that if you had constant pressure, you had a horizontal PV curve. And if you had a constant volume, you had a vertical PV curve. But an isothermal process, and we also did cyclic processes with a bunch of different segments. But if you just have an iso one isothermal process, you have a downward sloping curve, a curve that looks like this. And we could either be going from left to right or from right to left. Here we're going from right to left. So this is what iso this is what would be called an isotherm. An isotherm is the curve you get for a isothermic process. Uh, we still want to get in the habit of always trying to draw the PV graph, even though we didn't really use this to solve the problem. It's still a good habit to always draw the PV graph. Well, this is what an isotherm looks like over here, kind of downward sloping line. Never like this, always like this. <laughs>